So have you thought about what life would be like 10 to 20 years down the track? I'm probably guessing not. Most of us are pretty wired to think short term rather than long term, including myself. Um, but the problem with that is we become overly obsessive with what others think of us. And this is a slippery slope to go down because when we rely on external forces for our own decision-making process, you may go in the wrong direction. Now, this will then have a direct effect on our personal and professional lives. I'm massive on this, this agenda because when you can intertwine your personal and your professional and intersect those interests, curiosities, business, whatever it is, you start to move in the right direction. It's very easy to get caught up in the rules and regulations society has placed on us. And when I say this is being in a job that you've been in for five, six years, doing an apprenticeship for four years, being in a business that's not necessarily growing. That is why today we're gonna to look at optimizing for the whole. Now, when I say this is going back to nature, what does nature want from us? Because we are nature, the trees are nature, the grass is nature, and everything around us is nature. And this is the process of evolution. So if you're in the plumbing industry, you'll see that quite a lot of companies are now pivoting into the maintenance sector. And you may be in construction, electrical, um, painting, tiling, fucking cooking. But we're always going to need maintenance. We're always going to need maintenance on houses, commercial buildings, gyms, fucking footy ovals, cafes. As nature grows, we grow. And fortunately or unfortunately, the companies who aren't set up to optimize for the whole will be alleviated. And as I said before, there's quite a lot of them nowadays that are doing this, and this has been happening for years. If it's not set up properly, nature will find a way to alleviate it. Over the nine years I was on the tools, I was very fortunate enough to experience multiple companies. Most of them went into liquidation. That is the direct correlation of not having a business set up in a way that could withstand hardship. You must plan on the plan, not going to plan. Enter the maintenance industry. Whether you're changing a washer, fixing a leaking roof, fixing a stormwater pipe, changing a bib tap, maintenance is always going to be around, especially for years to come. There are always gonna be pros and cons to starting a maintenance business or being in maintenance. And I do believe we need more of it. The pros and cons for maintenance are working the hours you like, spending time with your family, being specific with the jobs you get, building a great company culture. Now, they're the pros. The cons could be dealing with late payments, not knowing how to start, finding work, understanding costs. This can be a very daunting process, but if you're willing to go down this route, there is tremendous growth and there is tremendous ability to make that vision of yours a reality. So 10 to 20 years from now, what do you see yourself doing? Is it being employed or is it running your own business? I know this may be a hard question to ask, but it's time to get ahead of the curve. There is a fucking major opportunity right now for future maintenance owners, whether you're just starting your apprenticeship, you've got a plumbing business, you're working a job, you are the key to your own success. And when I say this is, you must invest in your own skill set if you are willing to take this leap. So some of the books over the journey of mine I've been reading that have helped with my evolutionary process and running my own business is Principles by Ray Dalio. He speaks a lot on how it 
what it means to build a meaningful work culture, culture, a meaningful relationship in and outside your, your personal and professional life. And I think the best thing about Ray is he started with nothing. Like a lot of successful people do, they start with a vision and they just take relentless action towards it and have a never give up attitude. So that book has had a tremendous effect on me, Principles by Ray Dalio. Another one is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. He speaks a lot about mindset and how our subconscious beliefs can really take a, a massive control on our own being. So if you're into mindset, if you're into developing yourself, that's another great book. And then the other one that I really did start with was The 5am Club. That talks a lot about routine, waking up early, going to the gym, cold therapy, journaling, meditation, all the basic stuff that I've talked about in the past. But that is a really foundational book to start with if you're someone who's looking to, to change up the way you've been doing things. But if you're not a reader, this is where podcasts are great. And for those of you who are listening right now, thank you for listening. But there are other podcasts out there that you can listen to. It just comes back to you searching up what you're curious about. What skill sets are you going to need going forward on your journey to creating a life within maintenance? Start listening on the way to work and on the way home. This is something that, you know, whether you're in a job or in a business, is, can easily be done. Whether it's half an hour in the morning, 15 minutes in the morning. 10 minutes at night, 20 minutes at night. Start getting the wheels in motion because it'll start getting your mind thinking. The business that you create or have created won't run unless you're running, and pardon the pun for that, but I want to give you three non-negotiables that you must have when pursuing a career in maintenance. And it's making sure that your bills are paid on time so you can focus because financial stress is fucking real. And it's not something that you want to be going down that path. So making sure you set up in that route is, is crucial. Having a well-structured exercise routine, which is where uh, the 5am club book comes in really handy. It talks about getting up at 5am, doing 20 minutes of workout, 20 minutes of meditation, 20 minutes of journaling. Again, whatever works for you. It's about trial and learn. And then potentially looking at getting a mentor in this space, someone who's done what you're looking to achieve and piggy off the back of them. You don't have to specifically do exactly what they are doing, but trust me, when you can find someone who can elevate you to new levels and you can provide a fee to them to do it, you're more than likely to get the results that you're looking to achieve because you don't want to let that person down. Each person will have their own needs. So as I said, it's trial and learn, but it really is time to start thinking more long-term. Start thinking about the future. Think about the tools and the resources that we have right now to create that future. So I appreciate you all listening today. If you found value in this, please feel free to share it with a friend. And if you love the newsletter, please sign up uh, to the newsletter as well. But again, I appreciate you all listening. And just remember this, in 10 to 20 years time, and you're in the maintenance sector, don't thank me, thank yourselves. Have a great weekend.